I guess we're doing a part two. <laughs> um, so maybe I solved the um, camera dilemma if I was going to do a short video, but apparently this isn't short enough. So part two it is. Um, I was talking about the Little House series. Um, the 30 count linen was going to result in ornaments that were bigger than I liked. So I decided to go with the 35 because they will be like 3.6 inches. Um, and then by the time you add on margins, it's closer to a four inch ornament rather than a five inch ornament, which is what I like. Um, I also ordered some of the called for floss. There were about six or seven fancy flosses and like two DMC colors, which I already had in the stash. Um, so I looked at the fancy flosses and I ordered, I think four of them that I could tell from the picture on the website, they looked variegated. There were two colors that I couldn't tell if they were variegated or not. One of the colors was Blackbird, um, and it only called for one skein of floss for the whole series. So I kind of figured I can just use DMC 310 or 3799 or something of that sort for that color. And then the other color was Bamboo. Now, I think that's probably the color that is used for snow because it looked kind of like an acru and it didn't look like it was much variegated on the picture which i know you you can't go by because it's so hard to to capture those things but it called for five skeins of that color and i didn't want to buy it sight unseen and then get it and find out that I could have just used a crew or some other 712 um, because it wasn't strongly variegated. So if you are familiar with bamboo by, um, you know, Country Cottage, Country Cottage Needleworks, is that the name? Whatever brand that L um, Little House uses in their fancy flosses. Um, if you are familiar with bamboo, please let me know if that was a good decision or a bad decision. Um, if it's strongly variegated, then I might consider ordering five strands of it or five skeins of it. But if it's not, then um, I'm going to happily use my DMC for that one. Um, so yeah, the first one comes out in January and I'm thrilled and excited and I already messaged my best friend and said, I got the patterns on auto ship, so don't order them because you can stitch them after I'm done. Um, so I'm excited about that one. Um, I have mentioned in past videos that I love to garden and we had chickens in Virginia and I'm a beekeeper. Um, our retirement plans involve market gardening and setting up an apiary and um, something, something like homesteading, except that will supplement hubby's pension. Um, and retirement's not that far away. So um, yeah, we're, we're gonna have our own chickens and, and uh, I, I saw the first, um, the first preview of the ornament and it has two sheep on it and immediately in my head I was like no those sheep have to be chickens and then um Yvonne said something about goats so I think it would be interesting if we all changed the um the farm animals to suit our tastes and see what floss tube could come up with as far as options go um so yeah, I'm, I am more excited about this series than I've been excited about stitching anything in a long, long time. So um, I hope I'm not disappointed, but I don't think I'm, I will be. I think it's going to be a good time. So 
A um, couple more things. The first is that I have to send a huge thank you to Teresa at Kitten Stitcher um, because I won a giveaway that she did, which was very exciting to me because I rarely win anything. So I wanted to show you what she sent me. It's been all in an envelope since it arrived um, and I really wanna start using it. So I'm glad I'm doing this video. The first thing she sent was a copy of her Ragamuffin One Anne Harrison pattern which has a great description about the original sampler. Um, Teresa bought this sampler from England and it was in pretty rough shape, which is why it's called Ragamuffin. Um, she had to do a lot of um, kind of guessing and filling in the blanks because a lot of the stitches were missing and colors faded, etc., etc. So um, I just love this. She also sent a piece of um, linen, which will be perfect for my ornaments. And some fancy floss, because you know I don't usually buy fancy floss. Um, and this silk, man. So my youngest daughter has had some kits from Little House that came with silk. And I just didn't love it. Like, she doesn't love it either. She likes stitching with DMC better. But this silk? Yeah, I can't wait to try stitching with that. Some chenille green, which, um, again, perfect for my ornaments. And some fabric for finishing off some cushions or whatever I, de I decide to... S oh, I just got a good idea. I might like stitch some of these motives or maybe the house and turn it into a cushion and finish it with these. And then I could have myself a Teresa project. And also some um, paper flowers for embellishments. So thank you so much, Teresa. Um, that was wonderful and I appreciate it. And um, thank you. I have been busy myself working on some projects. Um, some of them are stitch related and some of them are not, but um, it's gonna take me two seconds to talk about them and then one of them will be a nice segue into the last part of this video. So, what have I been working on? Do you like my ears? Can you tell? Yeah, so um, we got the notice that there was going to be a um, elf hat contest at, oh, I got a string there. I gotta get rid of this string. Um, my husband's work Christmas party is having a best elf hat contest. So um, I was like, where are we gonna get an elf hat on this island? You're not, you gotta make one. So I went to the craft department of the hardware store thinking, oh, I'll get some red yarn and some white yarn and some green yarn and I will crochet an elf hat because there was an adorable pattern on um, Ravelry that I saw. Um, yeah. No red yarn. No white yarn. No green yarn. There was lots of purple and orange, and yellow, and brown, and black, and gray. It's Christmas, people. How can you not have red and white and green yarn? This was even before Thanksgiving, so like it wasn't like I waited until last minute. This is just how things are on Guam. Like Nothing makes sense. There was one skein of this, what do you call it, variegated? I don't know. You know, it's got all the colors on it. So I was like, well, I'm stuck with that. So I made the hat and I love the way the hat came out and it's technically supposed to be stiff enough. Yeah, can you see that? It stands up on its own. But um, I really wanted the striped hat. So when I get back to the land of real craft supplies, I'm going to make a striped hat for myself. Until then, this will have to work for the um, the Christmas party. And maybe I'll win best hat, maybe I won't, but um, those ears, 
my daughter wanted these because she had an elf outfit that she was wearing. Um, we volunteered to wrap gifts at the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society thrift store on Black Friday because they open the thrift store for kids and kids can come in and buy presents for mom and dad and we'll wrap them for them and mom and dad have to stay outside so it's a great fun. Um, so she wanted elf ears to wear with her elf costume. So I went to the um, costume store on Island because we do have a great one of those and I got the very last pair of elf ears. And I got them home and they were too big for her ears. So um, I stole them to attach to my elf hat. Okay, so I, been working on crochet. Um, I will link that hat below so that those of you who want to make a cute Christmas hat can. Um, we also, the other day, I belong to a little sewing group. Um, my friend Buffy, who I've mentioned before because her mom owned a cross stitch shop in Georgia, um, she is a sewer and she has been my sewing muse and really encouraging me to um, get to know my sewing machine a little better. And so she started a sewing group for some of the spouses here on island and um, she asked me to lead November's meeting. Um, and so we made some cute little pot holders. They're really easy. And I'm showing you this because I know that there are floss tubers and stitches out, stitchers out there who want to sew better because, let's face it, if you're going to finish cross stitch into anything other than a framed piece, like if you want to do um, smalls or stockings or anything like that, um, an elementary knowledge of sewing is going to help you out if you don't want to pay somebody else to finish your work for you. Um, and that's really kind of why I got into sewing. That and I wanted to make aprons. So anyway, I'm telling you this because this is a really easy project and I'm going to post a video below to walk you through it. Um, if you are a stitcher who doesn't know how to sew but wants to, um, you can do this, I promise. Um, and I made up a matching towel to go with it. It was in my stash and it matched the fabric, so I sewed that up. And then the last thing that I've been working on I will confess that until I started watching Floss Tube, I had no idea, no idea what an ort box was or what a needle minder was. I think I was seven episodes into Julie at Reflections, seven episodes into binge watching her videos before I like had to stop the computer and Google Ort Box because first of all, I couldn't even figure out what the word that she was saying was. And then I finally figured out, oh, it's O-R-T. And so then I Googled it and I found out what an Ort Box was. For those of you who may not know, it's, it's something to put your thread pieces in. You know, when you're done, you chop off your thread and I kind of make a big pile on the arm of the chair. Doesn't, isn't that what everyone does? No. Apparently, there are these ort boxes that you can put your thread scraps into so they're not all over the floor and your cat doesn't eat them and they don't randomly appear on your husband's clothes. So anyway, I didn't know what an ort box was. Didn't know what a needle minder was either because the whole arm of the chair is my needle minder. I just stick the needle in and my husband found it once accidentally. He didn't like that. So um, anyway, usually I just stick the needle in my fabric or in the arm of the chair. But I happened to be lying in bed the other night thinking, wait a minute, I think I have all of the supplies that I need in order to make needle minders. Because many years ago, I had made necklace charms with um, glass tiles and I had like the E6000 glue and I had magnets because I had made refrigerator magnets out of them as well. So I dug them out of my supply and I um, 
grabbed some leftover scrapbook paper that I had and I made myself some needle minders. Can you read that? It says, let it snow. Yeah, that's the big one. And then the little size is this one. Again, that kind of looked kind of Scandinavian to me. So I made some of these. Um, most of them got mailed out of Stitchy Kindness and then I finally realized um, maybe you should save one or two for yourself. So <laughs> these are all that I have left and my daughter has claimed one of them. So as soon as I can find more magnets, I will be making more needle minders because they're fun. Um, and that brings me into the final part of the video. As I mentioned at the beginning, I hit 500 subscribers, which makes me very happy. And I am doing a giveaway to celebrate. Um, so you may get a needle minder, but I'm giving away one of my project bags. Um, this is the pattern. I didn't want to do something Christmassy because it's not going to arrive in time for Christmas. But this is definitely wintry to me. Um, so I hope you like it. And I hope you enjoy it if you win it. So if you are interested in entering my 500 subscriber giveaway, the um, standard rules apply. Please be a subscriber. I would love that. I would love to get to a thousand so I can do an even bigger giveaway. Um, please be over 18 so that I can ask for your address without your parents' permission. Um, you can live anywhere in the world. This, this is not going to break the bank to ship because it's late. Um, please comment below on what your favorite winter activity is. Don't mention anything about a giveaway or free or drawing or anything like that. And the reason for that is because there are internet trolls that will just kind of enter when they search the word free or giveaway or whatever. And I would like this to stay inside the Floss Tube family. So comment below, tell me what your favorite winter activity is. Um, I will do a drawing for my next video, which I'm looking at the calendar. It will be sometime during the week of December 18th. It will definitely be before Christmas, um, but it will probably be sometime the week of the 18th. I know that um, the little one has some finishes that she would like to show off in the next video and they will be home from school that week so we can do a video then. So um, I'm not gonna give you a firm deadline if that's okay, because I don't know when it will be, but um, enter sometime before my next video. And I will do a drawing and send out a project bag and perhaps a needle minder and I don't know what else to a lucky subscriber. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, thank you so much for leaving your comments because they're always fun. Um, until the next time, go stitch. And I wish you fair winds and following seas.